Hi, Willie Hodgson here with San Jose BMW. Today we're here with the BMW Motorrad 2023 S1000RR. We're gonna take a deep dive into the S1000, some of the controls, some of the functionality, and most importantly, the 6.5 TFT dash. We're gonna put chapter markers in there, so if you'd like, you can jump ahead. Uh, but most importantly, if you have any questions, anything further you'd like to talk about or something we maybe didn't cover, feel free to reach out. Doesn't matter where you're from, we'd love to help you. All right, let's get started. So first we'll turn the key on. You'll see it does a pre-ride startup where it turns all the lights on. This is to let you know that all the lights are functioning as designed. So on the right handlebar switch here on the top, we have a heated grip button. When you first push the heated grip button, it goes to level three, which would be high. Another tap brings it to medium, another tap low, and then one more tap turns it off. Right below that, we have the mode button. So the mode button is how we change the complete characteristics of the motorcycle. So we can see that we're in rain mode currently. If we were to push the mode button, it brings up four additional options. That's represented by the dots below rain. A second button push would change to the next mode. So let's talk about rain really quick. So in rain mode, it's designed to uh, help aid in traction in a low traction situation. So the first thing it's gonna do is it's gonna reduce the horsepower and allow you to apply the gas um, with a nice, even, smooth application. Uh, moving over to the suspension. The suspension, it will go into a soft baseline setting. However, this is a dynamic system. So as you increase speed, or um, riding style, it will pick up on that and it will increase the dampening. Uh, however, the baseline is less dampening to again allow the tire to follow the ground and not break traction. Uh, the other thing it's going to do is retune the ABS and traction control for wet weather. So this has the maximum coefficient of traction built into the ECU and the algorithm. So it's gonna actually be able to anticipate a slide or a traction um, loss before it actually happens. So there's a little bit of um, uh, proactiveness in this type of uh, system, as well as reactive. So um, ABS and traction control, again, are retuned for wet weather, so you can um, ride more aggressive than a bike that wouldn't have that. So another button push here, brings up the modes, push it again, moves to the next mode. So the next mode we have on the dash now is road mode. This is designed for dry weather riding um, on road again. When I say on road, what I'm referencing is these first modes here, we see rain, road, dynamic, and race. These are all street modes, and so the decision making for the ECU is going to take, safety is gonna take preference over speed, where when we get into some of the expert pro modes, you'll, um, I'll talk about this, but you'll, you'll understand that, you know, on the racetrack, in the pro modes, the speed, you know, let's say corner exit, things like that, uh, the preference is gonna be speed over safety. So that's why we have these two modes for different situations. So in, in road mode, again, dry weather riding, uh, suspension is still set in a light dampening mode. ABS and traction control are now retuned for dry weather riding. So you'll be able to put the brakes on harder, you'll be able to apply the gas a little bit harder without you know intervention from the safety systems. Again, two presses here takes us to the next mode, dynamic. Now in dynamic, you'll notice the throttle crispens up quite a bit. The ABS and traction control are now retuned more aggressively. It'll allow a little bit of a front wheelie or front wheel lift off as BMW would uh, state it. Um, and now the, the suspension is gonna go to a stiffer baseline for the dampening. When you're changing riding modes, the suspension is constantly adjusting to riding speed and uh, riding style. That's why they use the word dynamic. So two button pushes again will take us to race. Still a street mode. You notice there it gave you a little warning about the uh, ABS and traction control. So they are definitely set in a more aggressive setting. Baseline for this is going to be safe. It is on road. So we'll, we'll talk about the racetrack settings here moving on. So suspension is gonna have a little bit stiffer uh, dampening setting. Throttle is, is uh, maximum power all the time. And ABS and traction control are now retuned for a much more aggressive ride. It's gonna allow a five second wheelie before it starts to put the front tire down. It's gonna allow a little bit of slippage of the rear tire before the traction control is activated and a little bit um, more aggressive braking. All right, so um, right below that, we have the stop start button. As you'd imagine, push it down, we'll start it. Up here is the emergency kill switch. I do always recommend using the key. It's one of those things, sometimes we get distracted, forget to turn it off. We all hate those dead batteries in the morning. 
Um, all right, moving over to the left combination switch here. Uh, on the top, we have the cruise control button. So if we move the cruise control button to the uh, right, it now has in an on situation. It's still not holding your speed. In order for it to actually hold your speed, it's a tap forward on the set. Now it's holding whatever speed you're going. This works so well, so seamless. A double tap will increase it by five miles an hour. If you pull it, it'll coast until you let go and it'll pick back up. If you just shut it off and you're at 0% throttle, it's just like you're at 0% throttle. It's gonna have heavy engine braking. A lot of times what I like to do is pick up the gas, accelerate past where my cruise control is set, and then turn it off. This makes for a very seamless transition from cruise control to throttle. Um, right below that, we have the hazard button. In order to activate it, the key does need to be on. Once you push the hazard button, it's gonna give you the indicators. If you shut the key off because you had to leave your bike and and pull it out it will not you will not be able to shut the hazards off without reinstalling the key turning the key on and then pushing the hazard button right next to the hazard button we have the traction control button so a push on the traction control button for two seconds a long press will deactivate the traction control what's about to happen is probably not good there are lots of settings that you can make and changes where you can get the electronics to work with you but uh, a good example of why you might need to turn the traction control off would be doing a dyno run. Uh, that'll prevent the ECU from trying to uh, kill power. Obviously you're confusing it. The front wheel is not moving while the rear wheel is. Uh, or maybe a uh, expected or unexpected trip into the gravel. Uh, again, the system would be fighting you with any kind of rear wheel spin. So you could just shut it off there momentarily. Now, like you would expect, if we shut the key off, turn the key back on while in one of these uh, street modes, the it will go back and resort to the safest setting and reactivate the traction control. To turn it back on, just a long press here, you can see turns it right back on. Now under normal riding circumstances, these lights will actually turn off once you've exceeded four miles an hour. Um, and, and what that's indicating right now is it's saying, hey, we see these systems, they, they seem to be functioning properly, but the last step is it wants to see the wheels turn, and turn in order to turn the lights off. If you turn the traction control off, it's gonna turn that light on. This is gonna remain on the rest of the ride or to indicate to you that that system has been deactivated. Okay, moving down here, we have the DTC button. So this is uh, the dynamic traction control and it actually has no functionality. And you can see that here when we're in a, a street riding mode. So the street riding modes do not allow you to adjust the sensitivity of the traction control that is reserved for the expert pro modes, which we'll talk about here in a second. Right below that, you have the turn signal. We all probably are familiar with this. Turn signal left, turn signal right, straight in, shuts it off. It's got a nice loud horn. We won't do it for uh, the rest of the dealership's sake at this moment. Um, in the front, we have the high beam button. So when we depress it or pull it, it will uh, give an indicator and that's like a flash to pass. If you push it forward, it will remain forward and also have an indicator as well. All right, now comes the fun stuff. So if we get into the menu button, on the top menu button, it goes two directions. When we press the top, this changes the rider information display. So this is a quick reference for all kinds of stuff. So trip one, trip two, uh, trip uh, average miles per gallon one, average miles per gallon two, ride time one, ride time two. This is a lot of information. Brake time one, brake time two. I personally really like to reduce the um, display up there and this is really easily done in the settings screen and by reducing it you don't lose that information there's just another way we're going to access it which i can show you here in a minute so if we press the menu down this allows you to jump into the actual different functionality of the dash this is just magic and what i think really separates this bmw from the rest of the super bikes out there so my vehicle we can see this little indicator at the bottom that if we press this button down one more time we'll enter my vehicle so another tab down so the first screen we come to is a overview of the entire bike so we can see we got one message we see the coolant temps at 61 degrees so clearly I haven't started this bike yet today um, total miles of five we got a service message 141 miles till empty 12.8 uh, uh, battery voltage and then the uh, bottom of the screen there you see the tire pressure for front and rear we don't see the tire pressure because these sensors are activated with centrifugal force so once you start rolling down the road and sometimes it does take a block or even two for the sensors to pick up and read and report back to the ECU so we have multiple pages within my vehicle so if we just take this little wonder wheel and we walk rock it to the right the first thing we're going to come to is trip computer one Trip computer one is all that kind of information that was up here, but in one central screen here. So you can see it all at one shot. Um, and you see there's a, still an indicator so we can press menu down one more time. This is a, an option to reset all values. If I wanted to do that, I'd just rock it to that side, to the right, and then it will reset all the value, values or individual if you'd like. 
Now, if we go over to Trip Computer 2, um, same as Trip Computer 1, obviously most bikes got two of them. Um, kind of a little bit different on the functionality. If we tab down, it has this automatic reset feature, which I love. So I always turn it on. What that allows it to do is every time you restart the bike, it will zero that out. So if we go to the next uh, page here, we have the um, tire pressure. So you can see uh, the spec is what I love about this so much. I used to put them on little sticky notes or double-sided sticky tape and try to post it on the bike, but now it's just built into the screen. If we were to actually have rolled down the road, this will show the pressures in the bike, but again, the centrifugal force has to activate the sensors. So if we rock it over one more screen here, and this is our service screen. So in the service screen, um, it presents it almost as if there's two services. This is one service. Like many motorcycle riders, some people have multiple bikes and you might not accomplish the, the mileage per service per year. So per BMW, they'd like the vehicle to come in for at least once a year to get it checked over. Um, some stuff is mileage dependent, some is uh, time dependent. So we will reset both of these every time. So you see that our next service is 618 miles and that's actually why our service, we have a service message. So if we rock it over one more time, it's saying, hey, your service message, bring it in. What it's basically saying is anytime you drop below a thousand miles, you need to take it to a BMW dealer, have them take a look at it, make sure everything is safe to ride. Now, if you were to have accomplished the 618 miles before then, um, we would reset both of these and it's either one year or the service interval on this bike is every 6,000 miles. We do have an initial break in at 600 though. That's why it's showing that right now. So I'll put it back in the home screen because it remembers where you left it last time you go in there. And then we'll tab up with the menu button to try a different functionality. So the next one we have here is the sport screen. This is really cool and something they changed for 2023. When you tab down with the menu, you now have a different display. Some people really like the and really rely on the, the way the dash is laid out. So you can see this has a radically different view than the, the one on the other screen. The cool thing that I changed for 2023 is the bike will now remember if you were in that sport screen and you shut the key off and turned it back on, it will remember that screen. In the previous models, it would always resort back to the screen that we saw initially when we first started the bike up. So this has now got a little memory. On the uh, left side here, we see DTC. So that's the dynamic traction control. And then on the right side over here, we see brake. Uh, brake is measuring meters per squared uh, deceleration. So these are two handy kind of things. So typical track day or even sporty ride out on the road, I'll be ripping around. I'll see this little traction control light flashing. Anytime the traction control is activated, it's gonna flash for three seconds after the traction control has been activated to kind of give you a second to realize what is going on with the bike. Sometimes it kind of takes you by surprise. So I'll be out at a track day, be ripping some laps. I'll notice that traction control light just flickering quite a bit. And when I come off, most of the time, I'll just see like a bar at 10%. And what that means is it only took 10% of the power out to control the, the chassis or the tire slip. And so in some cases, I have seen it all the way to the bottom. Normally that is a harsh or a very big intervention, a large slip of some sort, and, it, and the bike you know, determines how much power needs to be taken out in order to control the bike. Now on the, on the brake side here, kind of fun, you'll see under different braking circumstances how hard you're decelerating, and it builds a graph from the bottom up, and the track control builds from the top down. All right, let's get on here. So the next screen over here, we have another screen. This one's even more focused on, on racetrack with the lap timer substituted for the brake information. Same with the traction control here. And this is also configurable and changeable. We rock it over one more time here. We have another display on the screen with similar kind of information, really putting the tachometer as the predominant center of the screen. It's also got this cool feature here for lean angle. So it's gonna show you max lean angle achieved left and right for whatever session ride you've just done. We'll tab up with the menu button. Now, if we right now we see the navigation is grayed out, that's because a phone is not paired to the dash. And so we'll go over pairing a phone right after this and then we'll see what it looks like once the phone's paired. Media grayed out as well for two reasons. We don't have any media input. We don't have a phone paired to the bike yet. And this also requires a headset in order for it to send the media somewhere. This doesn't have external speakers as you would imagine. So it needs somewhere to send that music to. Next, next uh, option over here is the telephone. And uh, when someone is to call me, it's gonna say their name on the dash here. It's gonna have a red X on this side, a green check on that side. If you'd like to answer the call, you rock it towards a green check. If you'd like to 
um, deny the call, you rock it towards the red X and it would ignore the call. If we move over one more screen here, we have the settings. We can tap down into the settings here. So the first option we have is assist. So let's check that out. We, rock, we selected it by rocking it to the right. So the dampening, this is awesome for 2023. Again, they allow us to change the dampening per riding mode, even on the street modes. This was previously only available in the expert uh, pro modes. So if we rock it towards the race mode, let's see what this looks like. So it's allowing me to select the dampening for the mode. So once again, we, we could go into, we could be in race mode and we could make the dampening softer. So in common uh, use, you get used to a riding mode, you get used to how the throttle feels, you get used to how the, the bike is programmed, but you might do differences in rides. You might have a sporty fun ride in the mountains with your friends, or you might have a nice calm uh, ride down the, the coast. And so you might wanna have that, that same throttle mapping and it just change how the suspension feels and you do that in this mode. So what you could do is rock it up to road, you would now rock it in to select it. So you can now see that the dampening setting for race mode is now road mode. And all you're basically saying is that you would like a softer, more supple, uh, less dampening in this race mode. We'll go back and change that later. We'll exit out of that part. We'll go back to this one here. So vehicle settings is the next one. So if we rock it over for vehicle settings, the first thing you see is ride mode presentation. This is where it's gonna allow us to, and again, by selecting, we'll rock it to the right. It's gonna allow us to configure the options for the mode. So as we saw earlier, there were four modes. You can see them right here, rain, road, dynamic, and race. Again, those are all street modes designed for safe road riding. If we were to deselect one of these modes, like rain mode, we can now move down and we can now add a riding mode to the, the display. So as you imagine, when it says race pro one, that is a professional off road or off highway riding mode uh, designed to be used on the racetrack. So if we were to select one of those, so now we have race pro one, you see the rest grayed out as soon as I selected that because there's only the option of four modes available at any one time. So if we roll down to the bottom here, now that we've selected Race Pro 1, we can rock it over to Configuration. The configuration is only available in the Race Pro modes. So if, if we had rolled down, you would have seen it grayed out with just the street modes. But now that we selected Race Pro 1, we can enter that. And that's why this one shows up here. You know, typical track day. Okay, we'll select that one, we'll select that one. Okay, here we go. I'm going to Configuration. Okay, so now that we've selected all three pro modes, you can see them all. This is a great tool, especially if you're trying to dial one thing in. If you're working on suspension, you can go through and you could set up each mode to be the exact same in engine power, engine braking, traction control, wheelie control, and ABS, and just make suspension changes to see if there's something there that might help you in your riding. Um, or you can configure every mode in any way you want. So let's dive into one here. Okay, so the engine. So the first thing we see in engine is that it is not max power in Race Pro 1. So this would be a low traction, good way to start the morning maybe. Um, maybe you're using street tires on the racetrack, or maybe you're just not confident it's your first time at the track. You could select this by just rocking it over. And then the important part, let's say you're, you're even wanting to be more cautious and turn the power down. Once you've made an adjustment, right? So we're now down at the lowest it can be. There's, this is important. You have to rock it towards this arrow or to the right to save it. You know it's been saved because now it has the dot. If you, if you forget to do that, or let's say you, you want all the power, all the beans in, in the engine power, rock it over and now we're in five. If we were to put it back to where it was, which I think was two here, and we didn't rock it over and we exited that screen, look at it, it's still in five. So that's kind of what I'm talking about. Don't forget once you've made the changes to actually select the change put it back the way it was okay engine brake this is really awesome it's crazy that we can adjust this it's so cool what this bike can do now so with engine braking as you imagine with that deceleration and, and the um the reverse torque load on the wheel it helps to really turn the bike and so different racetracks like for example we like to go to sonoma a lot it's a really tight track and to do it all on the brakes is is a little bit challenging um, so what we like to do is turn the engine braking up for a track like Sonoma, sorry. So we'd rock it over to the engine brake and just like the power, we could turn it up or down. I'll leave it the way it is. We kind of went over how to change it. Traction control, again, fully adjustable, easy changes. 
Same thing with wheelie control. This is really great the way they work the two of them or pull them out together because um, rear wheel slippage is different than front wheel lift off. In past generations, uh, those were combined into one mode, so they've broken them out now, which is a, a big help. And then ABS. Um, Let's, let's look at the ABS right now. So this is ABS for the racetrack, if you notice that. So when they say for the racetrack, the racetrack has really high grip. You're using really sticky tires. The track's nice and clean. So again, if you were wanting to ride around on the road in this, what you're basically doing is you're taking all these amazing safety features and, and you're putting variables in where it, it, it thinks uh, is, is a given. So what, what you're doing is you're, here, you're reducing your guardian angel. I would highly recommend using the street modes on the street and in the right place, the right time on the racetrack, you can, you can mess with these modes. Now, if we wanted to select the ABS, we'd rock it over. And so this gives you a little breakdown, which is again, so cool, kind of shows you what the, what the differences are in the, the setup. ABS Pro is now, av now available in the race pro modes where it wasn't previously. ABS Pro adds corner detection. So what's really awesome about this is traditional ABS is just look at the wheel speed. So on ABS Pro, when the bike begins to lean over, it uses the accelerometer that's built on the bike or the six axis ICU that people are familiar with to detect the lean angle and change the intervention. As we change it, it's gonna give us the different settings for each one. So then if we go to all the way to five, everything is on max. And then if we went all the way to zero, Look at that, Someone, it's telling us that the ABS Pro is off at one. So that means now it's just standard ABS. Um, the front is set up for slick. What is slick? Slick tires on a racetrack, lots of traction. The rear ABS is off. When it comes to these systems, rider style and experience play a really big role. We'd love to have a deeper conversation with you. Dynamic dampening control. So again, why is it dynamic? It's because you're not setting it to one mode. It's, it's a, a, able to be adjusted. Um, so you can see we're at level six. Let's select the front dampening. We can go all the way up to 14 here. And then all the way down to one. Quick note here, we notice that the front dampening uh, is, is a group where the rear is broken out into compression and rebound. There is a part here we sell at San Jose BMW to break this front out into a compression and rebound setting. So what, what's going on here is that the they have a rear ride height sensor that allows to measure the swing arm angle. So with all the inputs of the bike, like throttle and all that kind of stuff, it can actually see the what's happening with the rear tire and live as it's going up and down. So with that additional input, the bike is able to break out the compression and rebound. So we have a 2D sensor, the same one the World Superbike team uses, has a really beautiful mounting uh, here. It is an improved BMW part, uh, not offered through BMW, but offered through one of BMW's partners. There's a spot in the wiring harness, you plug it right in, um, and once you've plugged it in, no programming needed, it'll immediately break out the front into a compression and rebound type situation. So when we roll it down to the rear, we can you can see you can adjust the compression uh, independently from the rebound. And in order, again, to do that for the front, you do need that additional sensor. Any questions, call our parts department. They can get you set up with one of those pieces. All right, so we will rock it back to exit the, the suspension. And then if you do get lost, I'm sorry, I didn't mention on the very bottom, there's a reset. So if you're playing with this and somehow uh, got in a position you don't know how, you can always go to the reset. So that's a quick overview. Again, what I love about this is just at a quick glance, you can see where the engine set, where the engine brake is set, what the traction control is, all the way down to the suspension settings. Really, really well thought out, nice functionality. All right, so if we get out of these modes here, we can go down to RDC. RDC is tire pressure monitoring. And so again, when you go to the racetrack and you're using some of those awesome Dunlops, which I highly recommend, um, you're gonna run some crazy pressures like you know 39 in the front, 19 pounds in the rear, you imagine that tire pressure warning light is gonna be flashing at you, thinking that you have some kind of problem and need to put air in the rear tire. So you can easily go in here and just with a rock of it, you can turn the tire pressure warning off so you don't have to look at it flashing all day. So next in the vehicle settings, we have lights. If we rock it over to select the lights, we have a light warning. So if you go into the racetrack, we're moving your, uh, what are now combined turn signals and rear brake lights pull it and your license plate, if you were to pull that off, again, the bike would want to tell you, hey, warning, your, your real tail lights aren't working. So we can go in there and shut that warning off. And then we have comfort turn indicators. So this is just auto canceling. Um, so if you're maybe 
doing a group ride or a parade or something you want to have your turn signal on the entire time and not have the bike fighting you on it, you could turn that off. All right, next one we have Hill Start Control Pro. What makes it pro is you can adjust how it's activated. So we see the manual right now is how it's set up. So if we were to squeeze and release the front brake, you get this little indicator on the top. That's letting you know, and it's obviously crossed out because it's not running. However, if the bike were um, operational right now and we squeezed and released the front brake, that's gonna turn, I think it turns amber, maybe even green to let you know it's been activated. Uh, there is another option. If we rock it over here, we can turn it either off if you hate it, or you can turn it on, man on auto. I don't recommend the auto because, you know, again, this feature, what is it designed to do? You pull up on a steep hill, maybe you got a passenger. Sometimes it's hard for riders to hold the front brake, apply the gas, ease the clutch out. I mean, there's a lot going on. So by squeezing and releasing the front brake, it's going to automatically put a little bit of rear brake pressure on there. So you can just focus on applying the gas and the uh, easing the clutch out. This is supposed to help you uh, not stall the bike. So really nice, the, the hill start control when you're loading the bike into the truck, but really you can get it up the ramp, you can squeeze the brake, it's now gonna apply that hill start control, gives you time to step up into the truck and then you can finish the load up uh, very easily. Under uh, lap timers, these are all how you configure the lap timer, mainly track kind of stuff. Um, but again, just like the rest of the bike, infinitely configurable and then shift light. So the shift light here, you could turn it off. There's a shift light behind the dash. We can't see it currently, but I'll show you when we go to the configuration here. So you can change how the uh, shift light works. Now we're still in the break-in process of this bike. So you can put the shift light wherever you want. It's not actually gonna change the end RPMs. That does require the bike coming into the workshop here and us reprogramming it. So um, at the current moment, it's set at 7,000 RPMs. Now, uh, during the break-in period, it's gonna, your rev limiter is set to 9,000 RPMs. So the 7,000 RPM gives you enough of a heads up that you see the light, make the shift before you're bumping into the rev limiter. Uh, have no fear, the bike's plenty safe with the rev limiter. So if you do bump it, you're not gonna hurt anything. But I will warn you, at 9,000 RPMs, it's right when the bike starts to come into its own, right when it feels like it's, it's fine in its groove. So it, it can catch you by surprise during the break-in period. That's why I'd also recommend no gearing until you're done with the break-in process. Brightness, this dash does have a photo cell, so it's able to adjust. You know, you really shouldn't have to go in there and mess with the adjustments. And the last thing is the frequency. So this shows you, that's what the shift light looks like. That's a four hertz flash. I tend to like the eight hertz flash is just a little bit faster. And again, if we rock it there, it selects that eight hertz and you can see that really is gonna grab your attention when you need it. All right, pit lane limiter. So the pit lane limiter is in the off position right now. If we were to select it, we would just rock it towards the right like the rest of the settings. Really the pit lane limiter is really designed for racetrack functionality. And I, and I gotta warn you, it's gonna allow it to rev up the 3500 and then it's gonna hit a, a temporary false rev limiter. It takes a little bit of practice to get it down and you don't wanna be doing that with cars and other things on, in your way out there on the road. Just turn that off for the temporary. DTC calibration. So this is referring to the dynamic dampening control calibration. And why would you need to calibrate your bike? Well, typically when you're changing the hard geometry of the bike, let's say you scooted the forks up in the triple clamp or, or made an adjustment of the rear ride height, you know, this is gonna change the attitude of the chassis and you're gonna wanna let the bike know you've done so by going in here and performing a DTC calibration. Outside of that, changing the dampening settings and uh, things like that, you do not need to calibrate the suspension, typically just when changing the attitude or changing some sort of suspension component that might change uh, the pitch of the bike. All right, so we'll rock it back one more time. We got system settings here. So this is where you're gonna change your date and time. Language, pretty self-explanatory. Um, down in here, connections. This is where you would pair your mobile phone. This is a one-time thing. So this is what the home screen of the BMW Connected app looks like. We'll go over here and we'll go to my garage. You could see there was a K1600 there. I got quite a few BMW bikes in my garage. If we wanna add another one, there's a little plus at the top here. So we just tap that. Now from this screen here, we're gonna jump over to our settings. So we'll open up the settings here and we'll go to our Bluetooth. At the same time, we'll rock it over to select adding a new mobile device. Rock it over one more time. This ICE 6.5 inch. So we'll select that. Once we select that, it's gonna bring up this pairing thing. We'll say yes and we'll rock it over to confirm. Bike is now paired. It's gonna ask me, do I wanna allow it to use my contacts? And I'm gonna say allow. What's great about that feature is now 
when someone calls me, it will actually know who that is. Okay, so now that we got the bike paired up, you can see a picture, same color, S1000. This is really awesome because from the comfort of my couch or my office, whatever, I can look at it and I can see that I have 141 miles till empty. That is based on the last quarter mile of riding. It is dead accurate. So what do I love about this connected app? Well, a couple things. One, we can now tap this second button here is the map button. I can punch in a destination and it will take me to the destination. So if we exit out of here, we're not gonna pair a helmet yet. So we're now in our home screen. Let's see here, options. We can actually kind of give it some uh, guidance on what kind of ride we're looking to do. Do we want to get there fastest, shortest, most efficient? You know, do we want what kind of windy? All right, so you notice how even on our home screen, it's going to pop up and make directions. There's also one more thing I wanted to mention. So right here, now that the phone is paired, you see this white box? That's going to give you the speed limit on the current road you're on. So if you don't like that, you want it to disappear, as you'd imagine, like everything on the bike, jump into settings, you can actually shut off the speed limit warning. Riding to your destination, it's gonna pop up the directions here in the upper corner, or if you prefer, you can tab down, you can go over to the navigation, you can see it's now selectable now that we've paired the phone, and it's going to give you full screen navigation like that. If we had a headset paired, we can rock it that way to get the, the audio command, and you can rock it to the X if you want to uh, end your guidance. Navigation, it has to be done through the app. You can't use Google Maps or any of these other ones, but this is great. I think it's based on TomTom. Tom. It works really well, same as the Apple Maps, so I've found it to be nothing but helpful. The next one over is the uh, ride tracking. So this allows you to kind of track some of the rides. It's telling us that we were on a GS1250, where we went, you know, how far we went, ride time, and you can actually see the ride that we did here. And then we can actually dive even a little bit farther into the analytics and it'll show us um, what was going on during the ride while we're riding. So it's really cool. You can see at any point in time, oh, look at that. It might've been a little bit of a sporty ride here because I do see some ABS activations later in the ride. So I just love this, this data. This is a typical stuff you get from BMW. Again, it's gonna give me everything that you could ever imagine. Lean angle. If you've got any questions, call us. We'd love to help. Um, but this is, this is really why I recommend downloading the app, pairing it to the bike. Um, once your phone is paired, another little heads up here, it shows you the phone logo, how much battery I have, and what my reception's like. So that really helps build confidence. We hope you found this video helpful. Uh, most importantly, everyone here at San Jose BMW is an expert on the BMW models, not just the S1000. So please feel free to reach out. We'll put links in the description. And uh, as BMW would say, make life a ride.